that. And then me, just getting started. And then me, and then me say after you say that. Yeah, you, then you say Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good morning. This is Billy Jean Bishop, and I am with Partners in Prayer. This is our 90 days of prayer journey. This is day 12. We're going to be focusing on restoration. One of our prayer warriors just happened to step into the altar. We are speaking from the altar at the Pentecostals of Alexandria. You do not want to miss this, share this. I'm going to let this woman of God speak to you a word. And we want to be not just hearers only, but doers of the word. And I'm going to let her talk to us as we begin day 12 of 90 days of prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, for hearing. But after that you have heard, this is not an easy thing. Praying is a wonderful connection with God. But after that you have heard, you have to make that connection. And then when Zion travails, children are born, prodigals come home, MIAs are stirred. The lukewarm are stirred. So after you hear this program today, please join us in travailing, agonizing, prevailing prayer of faith because this will work. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. We love you, Lane. Thank you so much. Well, okay. if it helps, but I, ju I just want them, I, I, want, I, I want it to go. I don't like to be seen more than I have to. <laughs> Thank you, Somebody sister. We're, we're, we're stepping in, <laughs> sister Lane. It's going to be. It's Amen. going to work. It's going to be. It's going to be. All right. You, you won't it. find anything. You, when you're on the front lines, you're going to get hit. Yes, you will. And you'll get the breath knocked out of you. But the way you knock the breath out of the devil is to get up and say, you're going to be sorry you ever hit me. That's it. <laughs> That's what you've got to do. You're yes. going to be sorry. You're going to be sorry. You've been going to be sorry you ever Thank hit you, me. Jesus. Jesus. You all just heard from Sister <laughs> Vesta Mangan. The ultimate. <laughs> the challenge to pray today. Welcome again to day 12 of 90 days of prayer. And I felt very strongly impressed, and now I understand why. <laughs> To come to the Pentecostals of Alexander, we've been hosting many of our prayer calls from the altar. I challenge you to go to the altar of your church yes. and to begin to pray and call back the prodigals. And so I have a very special, uh, I, I can't call her a guest, she's, she's a warrior with me, and she yes. is, this is Sister prayer Dia partners. Adams. We are prayer partners yes. from the Pentecostals of Alexandria. She is the prayer leader, uh, and we carry the burden for prodigals. We put the, the jars, some of the jars with the thousands, there are literally around yes. the world, thousands of names of prodigals in these jars. Yes. And today we're going to uh, ask Sister Dia to share her heart. She has a manna word for us. We are in week two, uh, the power of a parent's prayers. Yes. You know we're using the book Prayers for Prodigals by Dr. Banks. It's so powerful because yes. it's a journey of scriptures. It's a journey of praying the word. This is very personal to me today because I'm looking up at the balcony and it was over 20 years ago that I stood to my feet as the man of God preached about calling forth the prodigals yes. back to the altar. Yes. And I'm looking at that place where I cried out, somebody please pray for my son. Yes. And it was Sister Mangan that I met after the service Sweet and she said, God. they're not lost to God. God knows right where your son is. And I began a journey of praying. And this this is our ninth 90 days of prayer. We have partnered with Dawn and Diane Long, yes. Hope Ministries right here yes, at this at church. <laughs> Powerful testimonies. Yes. I love you, Sister Diane, Brother Dawn, yes, Long, we Dustin. Them. We love your family. Yes. We love Sister Dia and Dan Adams. Thank you. And we're going Thank to you. lift our voices in prayer. Yes. What I need from you. What I need from you is because this word has to go out. It must go out. It must. Sister Mangan said, we can't just hear it. We've got to do it. Yes. It's going to cost us something. Yes. But I'm oh, going to lift my voice in this oh. at this altar. We're at the altar yes. of POA. Yes. And we're going to pray and we're going to invite you. But yes. I need you to share this. I need you to share the, the, this, this live recording and audio yes. everywhere you can to as many people as you yes. can. Because God has lifted up the 
trumpet. There is a loud voice of the shepherd calling the backslider home. So as we pray, Lord God, I am asking you, you're already here at this altar, Lord. I thank you, God, for bringing me full circle, Lord. I cry out to you, Lord. Let the anointing break the yoke, God. Let the Spirit of God arise, God, and call forth the backslider home. Anoint a woman of God as she delivers a word to us, Lord. A word that will transform us. A word that will bring us between the porch and the altar. A word, God, that will change us, Lord. A word, oh God, that will loose the backslider. God, I pray that prodigals would tune into this. I pray that mothers and fathers and pastors and their wives will tune into this. That there will be a word given, Lord, that we will, God, have our dead restored back to life, oh God. We're asking it in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus. We plead the blood over this next hour, God. Uh, in Jesus' name, oh, in Jesus' oh. name. Sister Dia, I yes. want you to take your time today. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be a part, and I know this is God breathed. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I am so appreciative that you asked me to speak with all of you, but to be in my home church, which can be your home church virtually today. Sister Billie Jean is powerful, a powerful woman of God. She holds a minister's license, and I look up to her in so many ways. And so it was such a privilege to get permission to have this 10 to 11 prodigal prayer, day 12 of 90 days at POA, at the POA altars. This place that we're sitting is holy ground Many tears, much fasting and prayer has gone forth. All of our foundational learning and prayer has come from Vesta and G.A. Mangan and from Anthony and Mickey Mangan and now in the capable hands of Pastor Gentry and Lexi Mangan. I'm so thankful that we are here at the altar. Yesterday, four people were baptized at POA after service on Sunday. Five were baptized at POA Street Ministry and at POA 7 Ministry, seven were baptized. So this weekend, POA baptized 16 souls in the powerful soul-saving name of Hallelujah. Jesus. That doesn't come without prayer. Saturday night prayer, every Saturday at 6 o'clock we have prayer at POA. And it was so powerful. We were praying for our sweet pastor who is going to have lunch with Anthony. Anthony Trimble, yes. who has fourth stage colon yes. cancer. Yes. And we're praying and we're believing that when he touches and he speaks to Anthony, that God's going to miraculously heal him. For this is the time of healing, the time of deliverances and restoration and revival. This is the time. I'm so thankful that I get to say a few words to you that God spoke to me this morning. I hope it encourages you. I hope it equips you. I hope it uplifts you, and I hope that you can call your con prodigal today, and something will transpire and occur through the spirit of the living God. If a vessel is yielded to God, anything can happen, more so than talents or giftings. If somebody is yielded, all our prodigals do have to yield there was a couple here at our church. They had, they were uh, prodigals, six years. They used to help Dan and me with street ministry, worked very hard and diligently, our core group. And then something happened, an offense happened, and they stopped coming, and they stopped living for God. But yesterday, Sister Billy Jean, they were on the front row. Dan had prayed and kept in touch with him and called him and loved him, never judged him, but loved him for months and months and months, and yet and Saturday. He called Dan and said, my wife and I are going to come to church. And Dan said, you're going to sit with me. Pastor loved on him, hugged his neck. And I thought about the father running after the prodigal son. Because as the father was praying for that son, he had no idea that God was dealing with him as he was out in the pig pen or whatever it's called. He was dealing with him. We never know when our prayers are working. We can't see it. But God is actually restoring their thought process. 
process and giving them a clean, fresh heart and a new mindset. And God is working when we don't see it behind the scenes. God had given me something. When we pray for prodigals, I have a nephew that is a prodigal, born and raised. He was the first one baptized in our baptistry in 1987 when we walked over on New Year's Eve in this building, in this main church. That's why it's so special. I've been married here. My Both of my parents have been buried here, grandparents. I've had a child dedicated to the Lord, and I want that child to stay motivated. See, a prodigal does it always have to be outside the church. It's sitting on your pews. It's the decisions they make at home that they begin slowly becoming a prodigal. Maybe it's a wound. Maybe it's someone that's hurt them or offend them, or there was an open door in their spirit and Satan takes advantage of that and comes in and turns their thinking. And so we have to know that only love, the spirit of love can win them back. God had given me this scripture. Um, I want to, I'm ahead of myself, but I want to, it's Luke 15 about the lost, the three parables of the lost, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And when the Lord gave three parables so that each thing that was lost in everyone's different personalities or whatever they were at the places they were living. God gave a, each an d- example that there was time for restoration. There was healing. It didn't matter. The mama that was looking for the lost coin, I call it the mama looking for the son. She was sweeping to find it. Whatever she could do to find her lost son. As Sister Mangan so beautifully said, I can say this and Billy Jean has spent her life pouring out to others, giving faith, bringing faith, building faith. But until someone actually gets down in a closet of prayer and prays agonizing prayers and prays and travails and brings forth birth, the prodigals will just remain something that we're going to do. We have to get down where on our face and reach them. God was showing me this scripture in Isaiah 45 and 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou may know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, am the Lord of Israel. We know and understand that we, our prodigals have his treasure, our treasure in their earthen vessels. But the thing is, they're God's treasure. And we don't know where they are. They're in secret, some of them are in secret places. God knows exactly where they are, but they're his treasure. And God comes back as he told in three parables in Luke 15. I'm coming back for my treasure. I'm coming that back for that which is lost. I'm coming back. My hand is guided through the prayers of people, through mothers, of people that love prodigals, friends, families, daughters, husbands. They're cut. God is moving in our prayer, in the midst of our prayer. We don't always see it. There is a chance. My, my nephew who died of a brain bleed and the Lord brought him back to life again. He's still not in church. He's living good. He has no idea that he's a prodigal because he loves God. And he's in this mindset that that's culture. You love God and you haven't killed anybody and that you haven't done anything wrong. So surely I'm not a prodigal. The enemy tries to come in and twist and change, whether it's spirit of error or spirit of perversion, it comes in. But we're trying to reach him through love and prayer. See, in the end time revival, prodigals are going to lead. Prodigals are going to lead because they have taken wives. They have taken people and friendships. So when they get back to the treasure inside their earthen vessels, that's why the prayer is so important. They're being fought because the influx of the end time revival is coming with our prodigals and they're holding a key to end time revival. They're going to bring wives. They're going to bring children. They're going to bring friends. They're going to bring people that they they work with. It's so important. Prodigals are so important. It's, it's, it's not only bringing them back to the house of God, but it's bringing them back to the mindset to disciple people and to reach for other people. That's what my prayer is today because they will be the second wave of revival in the end time revival. So prodigals are key and our sweet Diane is here. Hi, hi. Di- we always have to acknowledge you when you're here. 
So the Lord began to show me our treasures, the secret hidden places are us on our face in our prayer closets, closed with God where no one knows that we're there. Those are the secret places. Then in the secret places, God goes and brings angels and people to intersect the paths of prodigals to bring our treasures home. I love when, when the Lord, the part of this scripture that says this, I call thee by my name. He knows their name. He's hearing your prayers. He knows that sister Billy Jean and Stephen Bishop have a burden and a burden and they pray for prodigals daily. They love them. Sister Diane and Donald Long at the Pentecostals of Alexandria live, breathe, eat, pray, love, restore prodigals. It is their far reaching ministry. Diane, they're having their P, uh, POA prodigal meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. I'm sorry. Thursday of this week at six o'clock POA prayer room. Get there if you can watch them on Facebook. Every meeting that you can attend holds a key to your destiny. God said those places when they're in the, you're in your secret place with me. I'm going to find them in darkness because darkness is nothing but an absence of light. So at some point, a prodigal has turned from the light and now they dwell in darkness today. It may not be tomorrow, but for now in the present, they dwell in deep darkness. But we, we do not dwell in darkness. Our prayers bring light. It brings forth people that come and intersect their path. The Lord showed me that this morning. He said, they are my treasures, dear. They're not only your treasures, the prodigals on the pew, the prodigals in the seats of your church, the prodigals in your home that are having a mindset of taking light and going to darkness because things woo them and stir them and they're hurt and they're wounded. And now they're afraid when people find out things, they will be judged. So they begin to run toward the darkness and there the enemy always puts people People in the path that will love. If we don't love our prodigals, someone in darkness is going to love them into total darkness and that that's going to cause us to pray. But our prayers avail much as Sister Vesta Mangan spoke so beautifully here. She's saying we've got to put it into action. Action when we don't see anything. Action where there's tears. Action where we're travails. Action where there's intercession. I'm desperate for my nephew and I don't want my daughter to go in a wrong direction. I'm praying for my daughter that God's what she has been born with that she keeps. And pastor's going to be preaching, Pastor Anthony Mangan, on redigging the wells this Wednesday and next Wednesday and then the Sunday if you want to tune in to POA and hear. I don't want my daughter to have to redig the wells and I don't want her to put dirt and silt back in the wells that da Dan and I have digged for her. It's so important how we treat a prodigal. It's so important how we approach them. It's so important that we're not so dead set on giving them a gift or a word of God that is not bathed and baptized in much love or the fruit of the spirit. Because by the fruits, you shall know them. They're going to know if you're loving them or have joy or peace or laughter or patience or long suffering. They're going to know and feel that way before you come to them with with a word. That's why I am so, I am so insistent on teaching. Please, please choose the fruit, learn the fruit, R try to make yourself available. You will have fruit tests and you, it will be tested. It will be tested by churched and unchurched people. But once you pass that test, God gives you that gifting. God's going to give you that gifting to the prodigal. He's going to send elect angels. He's going to send archangels. He's going to send cherubims and seraphims, which restore and revive and bring revival. Those are the angels I want watching my children as well as guardian angels. But prodigals are so close to my heart because my nephew, loves God. I'm sure some of your prodigals love God, but they say, oh, it's just a matter of the heart. And I tell him, is God not greater than your heart? Can you worship him in spirit and in truth? 
and not just come when the church has an Easter production and receive the Holy Ghost and then go back to everyday life. I want it to be life changing. I want it to be far reaching. God is touching and reaching prodigals more today than he ever has, but it's always an ongoing process when until all prodigals come home until the trumpet of God shall sound and time will be no more and they will want their name to be written and not blot out of the Lamb's book of life because the Lord is so merciful. He is so kind and he is so gentle. That's what we have to realize. We have to have gloves on. We have to have gentle hands with these prodigals and pray every day that even when they go to the store or they go to work or they're on the highway or they're in the vernacular of the city, wherever they are, that somebody reaches them and shows them love. Remember, prison doors were opened by love. When they were praying for Peter in the prison, it wasn't because Peter, they were healed in Peter's shadow. It was because they loved Peter. Love will bring you to praying for a prodigal greater than reading a book or quoting a prayer. Love will guide and lead you. And when you read those prayers, 90 days for prodigal, such a powerful book. My sister has hers all marked and it's going to be for my nephew someday, but I think it's her sixth year, fifth mm -hmm. or sixth year that Dawn has followed Diane and Donald Long with the prayer and prodigal ministry here and Sister Billie Jean and Stephen Bishop that through these 90 days, different revelations, different understanding, she has written in that book. And so this is what we're talking about when prodigals come home or prodigals see their parents praying, that their mindset changes, that they're loved and that God knows where they are. God has some of our prodigals in places now designed for their destiny. They're being held back before the water. I always say the water when like even in Noah's ark, when the water came, there was a bursting. It, they said it even came from the ground. It not only fell from the sky, but it was the bursting of the ground, the hardened fallow ground. That's why we have to pray the will of God. There's sometimes when God has to break the prodigal and the break their heart and break their spirit but it's done with gentle hands before that water of the tears that the parents and people who love prodigals pray that rain the deluge that comes down is from the prayer and the fasting and the tears that have been prayed the intercessory prayer the travails that have gone forth but God breaks up the ground before rain comes clouds form before that rain comes and this is the latter rain so this this is the double portion generation. So our prayers now are taking the time, a small amount of time to reach the prodigals because now a time is short. So it's a double portion generation. So our prayers are claiming, we're claiming our prayers are doing double than what they prayed in the seventies and eighties and nineties, which most of those prodigals have come home just like Mark and Ginger Cross walked in. God moved on them mightily. Dan has worked with them. You can't give up on your prodigal. You have to remain in love with that prodigal, gently and loving and kind. I want to say this too. This is why it's so important for us to be filled with light. Usually what happens when a prodigal begins to walk away, their shame, it's a spirit of shame that can come upon them. So they run into dark caves where no light dwells. So us being so filled with light, we've got to go after them, even if it means going after them in caves of darkness ill repute, whatever that it may be, we're going in to get our prodigal because Abraham prayed for Lot and Lot came out of Sodom and Gomorrah. We can pray our Sodom and Gomorrah out of our prodigals or their desire to stay and live there. We have prayed for my nephew and prayed for my nephew. I've prayed for my daughter to make right decisions, but in the end result, God's hand has to be upon them. God changes the course of their 
life. God will change their path. He will create their path and make crooked places straight. But it only comes through prayer. And everyone, even the word that Sister Billie Jean received from Vesta Mangan 20 years ago, that prayer is alive, Sister Billie Jean. Your sweet children, your oldest son, I pray that he's going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost because you're reaching for other people. And when we handle God's business, God takes care of our family. And you're so humble and you're so meek. And there's no hidden agendas with you or Brother Stephen. It's pure love and a pure desire to see prodigals come home and enjoy the fellowship. And for us to love them and make a place for them and prefer them. That's what's happening at POA in this hour. Thanks to Donald and Diane Long for their hard work. Thanks to Billy Jean Bishop and Reverend Steve Bishop. They're a powerful team and a powerful force. Donald and Diane are already preparing the future for a prodigal uh, conference here at POA. I mean, great things are on the horizon. So don't be discouraged. Don't be down because there is reinforcements and help that's around you. If surely the prodigals hold the key to end time revival, God's going to strategically place them where they belong, even if it's in a place of darkness, so they can come to their senses and say, hey, I don't want to dwell in darkness. I don't want to dwell in the cave. I remember the light. I remember the glory of God. But what are people are going to say? Your church is a hospital. POA is a hospital. So we're calling them forth. We're calling them out of darkness into his marvelous light, for they remember that treasure is in them and that they are a treasure. And God will find them in those dark secret places. He will call them by name. Angels will lead them out. This is the hour of the supernatural. This is the hour of the miraculous. God in no means is going to do business as usual, just as the prayers go forth. But he does abundantly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think or pray. Dan and I were in here from three to seven o'clock last night praying for today. It's prodigal. And I'm telling you, the Lord moves so mightily. He would bring prodigals to our mind that need prayer. We need to get on the phone and just say, I love you. Not saying, are you going to come to church? And I have to tell y'all with my nephew, I texted him the other day in all my sweetness. And I said, I love you so much. I don't worry. I said, I worry about your direction. I, you know, but it wasn't nice. You know, you know how you can be sometimes being honest. And, um, he said, so sweet. He said, sis, I'm never going to forget where I've come from. So instead of saying, I'm so thankful, I said, I'm not worried about you forgetting where you came from. I'm worried about what direction you're going in. And it was a pause because Dia did not use fruit. And I love him. I mean, I slept with him as a child till he was nine years old. I mean, very, very close to Jason. And uh, he said, I know, sis, I know. But immediately the Lord said, that's condemnation. Now you've made him feel condemnation. So all your prayers, dear, one word can tear down your prayer. One word in the atmosphere. Sometimes I walk to God and say, God, and I know that the devil provoked David to number the people. The devil provokes people to hurt other people. Even if you hurt a saint or you talk some way to a saint, if it turns them and it makes them angry or hurt, you're hurting their prayer because maybe they're praying for their prodigal. That's why it's so important how we act, what we do, that we live. It. We really live it outside of church because someone is depending on your word or someone is affected by our words. It's so important. He was affected by my words. And I can, then I had to go back and say, but I love you so much. But I knew that it didn't mean the same. I'm saying this so you don't make that same mistake. I just woke up saying, I got to get him. I got to get him. Like today, I got to get him. Got to get him. Got to get him. I listened to Sister Billie Jean. I so I text him. I got worried about him being a prodigal. And so God rebuked me, actually. So even in our passionate love for the prodigals. We have to be careful how we handle them and make sure they know they're coming back to a place of love where there's no condemnation, where there is only acceptance and wanting them back. When I saw Pastor Anthony Mangan hug 
the prodigal and his wife that came to church yesterday, I wept because it, he actually said, these were his words actually to him. This is your place. You are home. This is where you belong. It was never where have you been, what you've done. How come you haven't been here? I know what happened. He said, this is your place. You belong here. So today, for day of restoration and restoring, we've got to restore how they were before they left. God is going to bring them to that place where there's revival, restoration, healing, and deliverance. It may come in steps, or you may just find your prodigal. They may not come to church at first they may come to your home so your home has to be a sanctuary I'm saying that to myself because I've made mistakes with my own child I've made mistakes with my nephew because you wake up in this dither thinking they've got to be safe they've got to be safe I've got to say something when really God's saying it's only I am the only one that can help and save and deliver and heal and bring the dead back to life again dear You've got to give it to me and not take it up again at the altar, but bring that prodigal's name every day. God, is this the day of salvation? Is this the day they're going to come home? We have all lived a life and made mistakes that we wouldn't want anyone to know about or we're not proud of. Are they any different? Just because we sit on the front row and praise and worship and in the house of God and God has us in a place where he's blessing, God's bringing you to a place of blessing so that you can address these things with prodigals and pray because your strength is great in God and your faith of God is great. They're coming back. There will be prodigals that bring in time revival. It's going to fill the balcony of POA. I believe it and I know it. It's going to fill the places in your church. But if we don't show them love and kindness, let them come in your church dressed in shorts, dressed in tank tops, dressed any kind of way. Jesus said when they cast their net on the other side, when they stopped acting a certain way or having business as usual or certain protocols, they put their net on the other side and they were learned fishermen so they knew that that side worked but at thy word oh God I'm going to put that net I'm going to do something new I'm going to incorporate love and I'm going to incorporate not judging our prodigals as they come in even in my house if my daughter wears a dress that's too short I immediately say you don't need to wear that you don't need to wear that and God saying you don't need to say that I want to I want to share a personal testimony for today in September, October, and November, Dan and I fasted 90 days. Now, it was only till 6 o'clock. Okay. 90 days for our daughter. And so on about day 82, I wa and she's precious. I mean, mm -hmm. she comes to church. She's faithful, whatever. But sometimes we have trouble with, my dress is short today. Okay. And, and, and people say, well, that's not heaven or hell issue. Well, I want my daughter to be holy and modest and godly. I want her to be used mightily of God, Sister Billie Jean, because I know what she's capable of. And she told me this morning, Don Long gave her a word. Don't settle, Danielle. God's got great things for you. So on day 85, Miss, I'm fasting, so God's with me. Being honest and transparent before you. Here it comes. She walked down the hallway, didn't say anything. I went down the hallway and I peeked in her door and I said, you know that I've been fasting for you, this ugly manner. I'm being transparent with you. I said, could you just show a sign? Could you just act like you feel the fasting being poured out on you? It's been a big deal, Danielle. It's been hard. And all she said in that bed, prayer coordinator, she said, I'm sorry, mama. <laughs> So I'm, I'm coming so transparent. And God, when I walked down that hallway, God said to me, I'm not working on her. I'm working on you. And so I've learned from that. That's why I can say all of that. That's not just something I read or something that we so we get fed so wonderfully. And we're like fatted calves with Donald and Diane Long here at POA in the prodigal ministry. But I had to learn that because I thought that fasting all that time, she could at least try. But God said, I'm working on you. I'm tearing your heart down to give you a new heart for prodigals. You're going to learn 
idea that when you fast, I change you quicker than I do the situation. And the situations don't change when we fast because we don't change because we think we're right. Because we've read the word, you know, and we know it and we know what people should do. But do we require it of ourselves? How many people sitting on the pew are fasting and praying but have a heart of stone and they don't know it until somebody returns kindness to them that they never thought possible? God will work in prodigal's life in different ways, but it's how we view it. It's how we, when we respond, when God responds to responders. So when my daughter responded to me in that way, it changed. It changed. And I want to I wanna share something else. I just, someone needed that today. And um, I just felt led to share that because it made my fasting, I felt like tinkling brass and symbol because I did not show love. And even though I'd give my life for her yeah. on that day, it made fasting in her eyes. Wow. Is this what fasting does? Mom, is that what it does? When I get a call to a prodigal inviting them to church and then get mad that they don't come. Is that what fasting does? And so I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I want to read this. There is a crucible, and I love to teach about this. When the vessel becomes hardened because of hurt or offense, it restricts that treasure, the treasure. They can't hear the treasure in their earthen vessel. They can't feel him. They can't hear the still small voice. So I looked up the word crucible. It's a ceramic metal container, which we could say is our human flesh. And the substance inside that crucible, the human flesh, has been melted and subjected to very high temperatures. So it becomes a new thing, a situation of a severe trial. How do we know a lot of prodigals leave because their parents die or they didn't get something that uh, maybe a spirit of entitlement. They thought they were going to get a position in church that they didn't and maybe they really deserved it. Man appointed and they thought they were God appointed. Whatever it is, it's a situation or severe trial in which different elements interact. So you got anger, unforgiveness, you're mad. So all of these elements, you see, are going on inside and it leads to the creation of something new. So that means that all that's happening in that crucible. God has it in a crucible because he knows the end from the beginning. And so he's always has his hand on it. Like when he brings up the, the dross and the silver, you know, he refi the refiner's fire. But this isn't what I'm talking about, a refiner's fire. He has the prodigal. But all these things have changed him. So you're dealing with something new. So the old prayers from yesterday will not work. The things that used to work yesterday will not work because now you're dealing with something new because they've been so hurt. And God brought that. We, fr we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We struggle not against it. See, sometimes we struggle against it. We fight against it because we want them to be a certain way. When God is saying, I am the way, dear. I am the truth. I am the life. You have to come that way. We're wanting that so badly. So I wanted to say this. I found this also. I mean, I'm just going, I want to read some of these because God gave them to me, but God has other plans today. And it's been so good because all this is about restoring. You have to restore to have res res re restoration. We have to restore them and love them. We brought this couple out to eat yesterday. For instance, mm -hmm. we stayed with them until four o'clock loving and hearing their story, hearing what has happened to them with just straight face and saying, God, you've got this because God had to, or they would not have walked into church. And I want to read it. This is, um, but it, it's in uh, Jeremiah 18, 5 and 8. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but I know that time is short. But if the people of a nation, let's say, or a family or a prodigal, change their hearts and lives and stop doing evil things, I will change my mind and not bring on the disaster that I have planned. So if the prodigal, if we can change that prodigal's heart through prayer, God's not going to bring on them judgment. God's not going to bring on them the disaster because the way of a transgressor is hard, is what the Bible says. So God's going to change that because of our prayers. It's going to change 
their heart. And if Moses changed the mind of God about the children of Israel through prayer, we can change the mind of God through our prodigal and even change the plans of their life. That's how important prayer is. Prayer is so important. The prayer brings forth the restoration to restore prodigals, to even to restore those that try to pray like God restored and had mercy on me to tell me, I'm working on you. Keep your mouth closed unless you're speaking my word. You're going to go through disappointments. You're going to go through things that take your breath out. It's going to knock you down. We had something two Thursdays ago that nearly wiped me out. But I said, God, I'm leaning on you, the everlasting arms. You have this, you have them. I'm not dismayed. I'm discouraged. I'm disappointed, but I'm not going to be dismayed. I'm going to look up to the hills, which cometh my help. I'm going to go in the secret dark place so that you can reach my treasure in darkness. That's turned away from light. These are the things that God's wanting to do in this hour, even at POA, there's more people coming back to church than ever before. It's a sign of the time and your prodigal is going to come. I'm saying it's not easy. I'm not saying it's going to be tomorrow. There are things even in my own daughter's life that I wish were changed ideals and mindset born and raised in church. Yes. What do you do with that? You're saying, Oh, that's cultural. That's generational. No, I'm going to keep praying until God. And so it's so important to love. And that's what God had told me about love when I was telling Danielle that I wanted her to do a certain thing or that. That is why it's a time such as this. Remember, this is what God told me this morning. This is so powerful to me because it spoke to my situation. God said, I have a root that can spring up on dry ground. You're not going to have the prodigal all together before the root comes. Because God said, I will form that root in a dry place, in a desert place where nothing grows, where no water is. But God said, remember what God gave us in Genesis when he said about the water, he broke forth those cisterns and the waters came from the ground and the waters came down. And that is what God God is going to do. That root is being placed now in dry ground. And I know that I've gone long, but I, I just want to pray a minute. I just want to pray about our prodigals. Hallelujah. When God began to deal with me early, early this morning, and even late last night, I went to sleep saying, God, let me speak your word. God, let me feel someone's heart with hope today that you're going. It's on a time. We're in the waiting. But I keep telling God, but the waiting is short. He said, with a swoop of my hand, I can reach anybody. Just a swoop of my hand, dear, instantaneously. And so I got, I'm thinking, because this one may get theirs instantaneously and I don't. I'm in the waiting. What am I going to do in the waiting? That's when God works on us and perfects the things in our own life that need to be perfected. So I just want to pray before we end and give this back to Sister Billie Jean because my heart is so filled with prayer and fasting for these prodigals. My heart is so filled for them to come back because God gave me a charge in my spirit. He gave me living water yesterday to sit by two prodigals at church and to have lunch with them. God said, see, Dia, there's hope. You never thought you'd get that call on Saturday and said, Dan, I'm coming to church. Save me a chair. Never would have thought it. But see, that's how we are. We don't think things have to come in our way or how we think. And God saying, no, Dia, it's coming in my way. It's coming in my time. But the fact that it's even coming, Sister Billie Jean, is what's so wonderful, wonderful to me. So we know our hearts. God's hearing our prayers. He understands the burdens that we carry and what we need and what we desire to see our loved ones come back. So I want to end this with a prayer for the prodigals. 
God, in the powerful name of Jesus, through your mighty word and power and unction and anointing, send every prodigal your love and kindness, your tender mercy. Raise them from the dust and the dunghill. Set them with princes and the princes of your people. Let them feel your power wooing them and stirring them. Send them dreams. Send them visions of your love. Send angels by their bedside. Send angels at their work. Send angels in their home to bid them, to bring them back to a place in you. God, settle it with them that they need you and love you. Answer the people's prayers that we've prayed in abundance, not in few, but God, the intercessory prayer. Send it to our sons. Send it to our daughters. Send it to our family. Send it to our husbands and our wives. God, I'm praying today that you reach the heart of the prodigal, wherever they are, wherever they're hurting and wounded are weary or God and, and the devil has twisted in their mind that they can't live for God that it's not for them that it's not necessary that they don't have to go to a house of God that they just love God in their heart we bind and take dominion over that lying spirit in the name of Jesus and curse it back to the gates of hell from whence it came and we loose angels of the Lord cherubims seraphims guardian angels if God can send my Michael, the archangel to Dustin Long. God, you're no respecter of persons. Send Michael to our prodigals to speak to them, to appear to them, to know that you are real and you're showing yourself strong on behalf of our prodigals. Lord, I'm praying every day that you're doing something in their life that reminds them of where they belong, of who they are, that they get so tired of their situations and circumstances and places that they are living that they're turning to you. They remember as a youth, God, praying for you and coming home with swollen eyes, drunk in the spirit, holy laughing at the altar. Lord, you said to bring to your remembrance. Now we're asking you to bring to their remembrance the times that they were filled with love and the spirit of God flowed in their life freely and they could access your presence. Lord, so quickly, God, through prayer and through love, let them be reminded, oh God, that there are loving people that are praying a hedge of protection and standing in the gap, building the hedge of protection over them. Send it today, God. You're sending. These are the days of restoration. Dry bones are coming together. These bones shall live again. They shall be used mightily of God. They shall usher in in time revival. They shall bring visitors in. Oh God, you have a place for them. You have a destiny. Sometimes when we run into utter darkness, you're running them right into destiny. You don't have to go into destiny from prayer and from the church. God can reach wherever our prodigals are and bring forth destiny through trials and situations and things in their life that occur that bring them to their face, that bring them to their knees. God, we're not praying that you do it in a sweet or kind way. Yes, we want it as mothers and aunts and uncles and mothers mothers and grandmothers, but God, we're asking you to do your will. If it takes you breaking the cistern, then you break the potter. You are the potter. They are the clay. Then you break it to bring forth more a new heart as you did in the children of Israel. We're crying out today at the altars of POA for our children, for our lost loved ones, that they're not lost to you. We may not know where they are. We may not understand decisions that have brought consequences even in our own lives it has had that a domino effect even in parents and grandparents lives we don't understand it but God you're not only working on them you're working on us to change us oh God to be humble and to love people and to not judge people because when it comes to your household judgment goes out the window judgment will go out the window every time something comes in our own household because we've had to live it. We've had to understand it. 
We've had to forgive it. We've had to overlook it. So when it comes to another person, we already know how to forgive in love. Lord, I'm crying out today for our prodigals, God. I thank you for Billy Jean and Stephen Bishop. The love, their prayer leaders, their reverend, they have a card with the license POA for Donald and Diane Long, who should have their ministry license. Thank you for them loving people, encouraging people, calling people on the phone. Thank you for people that are reaching people that are reaching prodigals because the reinforcers need reinforcement at times. So we lift up holy hands to you, thanking you, God. You're calling them home. You're bidding them to come home. You're going to call them out of darkness. I thank you so much today for having the privilege to be on Sister Billie Jean and Stephen's Partners in Prayer, day 12 of 90 days. Thank you, God. And may somebody take this to their prayer room when they hear it. Let it encourage them. I pray, Father, in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Sister Dia Adams and Sister Diane Long oh, is, thank you, Jesus. is sitting in the in the pews with us today. This yes. is this is uh, Billie Jean Bishop. For those that are just tuning Jesus. in, I asked to come here to sit in this sanctuary, this holy place where my journey, my personal journey began yes. over 20 years, standing up and crying out to the preachers, all the ministers, please pray for my son. Yes. Somebody <laughs> cry out for my son. Oh, and Jesus. as I wept and as I began to travail in the Holy Ghost, I was bent over, standing up there oh, in that balcony. Jesus. And God has brought me on a journey yes. to this place. I'm full circle today. And the Lord is saying, Jesus. I have with, I am with you. I have never left you. I have never forsaken you. So I'm at the altar. I'm challenging you today. You can, Some of you are watching the video. Some of you are listening on the prayer conference line. Some of you listening to this audio after it's being replayed. I am challenging you. Go to your altar. Jacob went to the altar. Jacob was called a deceiver. He wrestled with an angel. He wrestled and God marked him. The angel marked him by prayer Ooh. and listen to me he was restored to yes. Esau yes. he was a deceiver but because of prayer in the presence of God at the house of God at the altar oh, set the up to yes. commune with God oh. there was deliverance before he ever met his brother Esau was set out to destroy him Jacob had brought children and wives with him that he didn't have when he fled when he left and I'm telling you today prodigal you, I'm writing a letter yes. to you I've been writing a letter to tell you that the church has changed. The word of God is still the same. The same message of salvation is being preached but as you are being called as you are being changed we are being changed. We have made ready. We as the servants of the father's house have made sure that the calf is being fed. We've made sure that the robe and the ring the father's going to put that ring on your finger but the servants of the most high God we're going to come to together and we're going to celebrate. He endured the cross and he suffered the shame for the joy of seeing these backsliders and the hundreds and thousands of names that are around the world. God is doing something. Don't you sense it? It's coming from the altar. We are yielding to the voice of the Father. We are following the leading of the Holy Ghost. God has lifted up trumpets and there are messengers. There's pastors. There's a Angelus, there's missionaries. Yes. There is saints of God yes. that are entering into intercession yes. as never before. God is changing us yes. because we are all part of the body of believers. Oh. Those beloved prodigals have yes. the scent of the blood oh. upon them. Oh, Jesus knows my the God. scent of the blood. He sees them in their blood and he's going to bring them out. You, we Jesus. have got to be ready. Thank I want to just Jesus. speak to the prodigal for yes. a moment. If yes. you're listening to yes. me, today. If you're a backslider and you're not sure if you want to come back to the church house, let me tell you, God has been working us over. But I also want to encourage you. God has been strengthening us. We have been overcomers by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. We're still here. That same keeping power is here for you. That love that has kept 
us, the preaching of the word of God that has sustained us, yes. the preaching of yes. the word of God that has brought us to these altars. Yes. And we prayed through the trouble and yes. the loss and the discouragement. We brought our children around these altars. Yes. That same anointing and that same power is for you. That same love of God is waiting for you. We are here. We have lived through yes. pandemic. We yes. have lived through yes. disaster. We have lived through the death of our loved ones. Yes. We have battled our way through the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Yes. We have humbled yes. ourselves and God has Ooh. responded. You are welcome home because the church is ready for yes. you. We have made ourselves ready. The bride yes. has made herself ready. Yes. We're full of anointing oil. Yes. We can love through the power and anointing of the yes. Lord. Yes, yes, we are fleshly and yes, we need to die daily. Sure. But I'm telling you, backslider, we have made yes. ourselves ready. Yes. We're preparing for the wedding supper powerful. of the Lamb and you are a part of it. Yes. You are invited to the table of the Lord. Yes. Your space, your chair has been saved. You oh, are welcome at the Father's house. You are welcome to come and sit at the table and to feast of the Lord. Those of you that have been watching elders live for God year after year, uh, be encouraged, backslider. Yes. The same anointing that yes. God's put upon that yes. silver-haired intercessor, yes. that anointing <laughs> is waiting for you. God has given us power to become sons and daughters of the Most High God. God has not taken that gift of the Holy Ghost away from you. It is just buried down deep in the dark place. The Lord is shedding his light. He's calling you personally by name. The shepherd has gone after the one lost sheep and your name. He's pursuing you. Those of you that are listening, that are on the borders, you're not quite sure where you are in your walk with God. You left because of traditions. You left because of hurt. You left because of the lust of the flesh drew you away. Drug addiction drew you away, deceived you, pulled you into a dark pit. But I'm telling you, the same anointing power that's upon Dia, myself, Pastor Ma uh, Mangan, my pastor, the evangelists around the world, that resurrection power that yes. resides in us is waiting for Ooh. you. All you have to do is submit yourself. Yes. Jesus has Jesus. called your yes. name. Yes. You can't get away from the voice of the lover of your soul. Oh, never, He's compelled never. you. Yes. Come home. Jesus says, Jesus, come as you come are. Home. Bring your babies like Jacob did when yes. he met Esau. Esau was set out to destroy him, yes. but he fell on Jacob's <laughs> neck. And Jacob oh, said, I brought you gifts. Here's cattle. Here's the things that I've had. This is all I have left. I'm bringing them to you to be reunited. Yes. The elder brother spirit is dead. Yes. The elder yes. brother spirit yes. has been destroyed. That voice, we are all ready to celebrate yes. you. Bring the lost with you. Bring your wives. Bring your children. Bring the brothers. Bring those you work with. Begin to declare that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, Ooh. today, Ooh. and forever. My Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My children's names are in these jars. Yes. Many of you that I pray for, his names are in these jars. And we're going to pray, Sister Diana, if come you're on. strong enough to come, yes. we're going to pray. We're going to we're going to declare a blanket yes. prayer yes. today. I've come to you because of yes. a faith. There's a gift of faith that's resting yes. upon us. There's yes. a fresh yes. anointing, yes. and we're going to believe God. Every name. Yes. Every Lord of God across the world, Lord, today. We call these prodigals back to you, Lord. God, the pastor is preaching to the prodigals, ready to receive them, Lord. Come back. Come back to a people of the name. Come back to faith. God has gifts for you. God has strength for you. God has restoration for you. God has joy for you. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood over every jar. It is a wonder prayer. Oh, God, reach 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 God, Oh, yeah. Let's make way for the prodigal to come home. Oh, 
God. Hear us as we Hear sit from in faith heaven. agreement today. Yes, oh God. We Pour agree. out your spirit of restoration. Restore them. Call them back from the dead faith, Lord. Call them back every altar in every church of every prodigal let them go home yes thank you Jesus thank you Lord Send them, Thank Lord. you, God. Send Loose them, them release Call angels, them. oh God, yeah, yes. to wrestle Lord, down God. that which uh, wrestles Ramadan, with our God. backsliders, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Jennifer yes, Williams' yes, daughter, yes, oh God, I pray for her. Oh God, her Louisiana. God, send her home. I pray for Dr. Mason and his wife, Mary, God, for the daughtership, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. One mind, one accord, one prayer changes everything. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the 11 o'clock hour. What difference can an hour make? Hallelujah. We're here for you. We're stronger together. The power of God unites us. The word of God empowers us. And the preaching of the word of God is going to restore them. Hallelujah. Find yourself a place of prayer today. Find a prayer room. I challenge you, go to the altar. Fill up a jar with the names of people from your city, from your church. Ask somebody you go to church with, what's the name of your children? Yes. I want to pray for yes. them. Yes. I want to call them by name. Yes. Thank you, Sister Dia Adams. Thank, Thank you. you for the Diane Pentecostals of Alexandria. Jean. Sister Diane, we appreciate you. Yes. I am infused with strength and yes. anointing yes. today. Hallelujah. The love of the Father. God bless you. Join us tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We'll have a, a testimony, a personal testimony. You don't want to miss it. We are on day 12 of 90 days of prayer. What will God do? But you have got to hearken to the word of God. Go back and listen. Sister Vesta Lane Mangan speaks to us. You can't be just a hearer. You've got to pray the prayer of intercession that will bring the prodigals out of darkness to light and see them restored. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Dia. Thank you, sis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Thank you.